Hey guys, welcome back. Better than a Let's Play Season 2, Episode 29. I'm Enigmus, and today we're starting off with a little time lapse. Just a little bit, not a lot. We need to get a roof onto our uh, outer area here, this big, large courtyard where the, the beginnings of the Nothing Factory are going to start coming together. We've already got part of it in the form of our Tier 4 ore processing. That would be a something component of the Nothing Factory. If you're, if this is your first time, you know, what am I talking about? The Nothing Factory. We're taking all of those projects that we ever wanted to do and build and said, man, I wish I could mess around with this mod or that and the automation and the machines and stuff, but I can't figure out what to do with them. We're addressing that with the Nothing Factory where we can build whatever we want and it doesn't have to do anything except look cool. That's, that's it. So our tier four mechanism or processing definitely looks very interesting, especially when you get right down to it. Uh, it. It does something which is allowed. That's definitely allowed, but there are other things we're going to be doing that will do nothing at all. And that's unavoidable in this case. But unfortunately, we are still on Mars, which means the risk of meteors crashing down into our courtyard is always very present. So. We're taking reasonable steps to protect ourselves from that kind of explosion. The creeper just took one look at what was going on here and said, to hell with you guys. Uh, we want to kind of cover it up, and also I need to get an idea very, very clearly of where I can build and where the roof is going to be, because I don't want to put myself in a position where I have to suddenly make a really ugly roof because I built too high and I have to either adjust the roof or I have to redo a big chunk of a build because I decided to put off putting the roof in place until it was too late. So that's what we're doing. We're actually taking, if you imagine an ellipsoid, which is kind of like an egg shape, only it's more even, it's not fat at one end and narrow at the oven, it's, it's properly um, uniform all the way around. And then you segment it into eight equal pieces one of those pieces goes on this roof. That's basically the shape that we're going for, um, which I'm getting all of the details for that from plots.co.uk. For those of you who may be new to my Minecraft builds, uh, plots.co.uk is the site uh, that I go to for all of my round building needs. Uh, no, they don't pay me. Yes, they have an awesome site that you can basically get any shape you want in the round category to build whatever you like. It's very cool, and it makes things a heck of a lot easier than trying to do it all by eye. Now the whole idea here, once this is done, is we're gonna continue on filling up the courtyard area with machines. And I showed you previously in a previous episode the water turbine and the, the gears and the conveyors and all that, and some of the stuff from Resonant Induction which is a mod that I decided would be really, really fun and interesting to use, especially for the Nothing Factory, where again, it doesn't have to necessarily do anything as long as it looks cool to have all these things turning and all the different gears turning against one another and some of the other things that are in the mod working nicely uh, could definitely add that sort of thing to what we're trying to do here, if we can get it to work. So one of the things that I wanted to do is I wanted to get some water from our reservoir up on top of everything and flowing actually down into the courtyard area where we will harness it and make sure that it's not allowed to make too much of a mess and use that to power the water turbines that will be used to power possibly something, maybe nothing, but they'll definitely look cool doing it. So there's, there's nothing particularly complicated about what I'm doing. I'm just trying to create a shape, if you could call it that, or a travel path for the water that's gonna allow the water to actually continue flowing all the way down just like that so nothing particularly complicated and now that it's done we've got the water we need for our water turbines I tried messing around with them here on Mars I, I wasn't having much luck so I decided that if we were gonna continue with resonant induction and try to use it in any way shape or form we had to do some pretty heavy duty experimenting and this was definitely not the place for it. And just like that, here we are in a creative world, uh, being creative and experimenting because it's so much easier. It's so much easier 
Um, there's a lot going on here. Now, when we talk about the Nothing Factory, that is completely entitled to do absolutely nothing, but it has to look cool while doing it. We've got some definite contenders here for things that we would want to include in that. Uh, just because, you know, interesting things moving and, you know, we've got like lasers shooting up into the sky. It took a little while to kind of sort out what we were doing. Uh, again, a shortage of comprehensive documentation causing a, cer a certain amount of confusion and causing things to take much longer than they would normally necessarily take because we have to kind of experiment and figure out a lot of things on our own. There's some information, but there is still some very, very significant gaps in that information. So as we go through this, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kind of try and do things even more in detail than I did with the, the hydrogen chloride plant or the tier 4 processing system and that will build some things on the fly just to illustrate how they work, how they go together, so that if you're trying to duplicate something like this with resonant induction, you've at least got sort of a foundation that you can mess about with. Now we're gonna look at all this stuff later. Uh, for now, we're gonna look at some of the problems that I encountered. This gnarly looking thing is a water turbine. Um, and I absolutely love the look of it. It's very sort of industrial. You could do some really neat, uh, almost steampunk-like uh, builds. It's supposed to run on water. And I just wanted to show you, actually, let's kill these source blocks here because they're, uh, they're not doing anything anyways. You may have noticed that I had it set up so that if you watched the water, it was all flowing in this direction and I was trying to motivate this thing to turn and it wasn't working. So what we've got here basically right now is an open area underneath this turbine and then we've got obviously an open area above the turbine and we're going to put a single block of water, single source block, and then it's going to happen very quickly but watch it'll start to turn actually quite quickly and then it will stop. Just like that. And that's like the most infuriating thing because you can see it start to work. You can see that you've satisfied some condition in order for this thing to work and then it just stops. And what it does, as near as I can tell, is it creates its own source blocks underneath itself as soon as the water comes on top. It's almost as if it's trying to replicate the effect of water passing through it. It didn't seem, when I was looking at it in one of my many tests, as though it was the water flowing around and then it's kind of flowing under, although that may have been the case one way or the other. I've tried putting um, blocks underneath so that it can't have any water underneath at all. It would just be the water flowing over it, causing it to spin. Put the water block on, it didn't spin. I've tried water around the sides. I've tried water deeper underneath so you can see here it's two blocks underneath actually three the motions yeah it's three blocks underneath here uh open air but i've tried it with as many as six blocks underneath this thing that would just open so that the water maybe would have less chance to kind of bunch together underneath didn't help didn't help at all um I, I, I've done everything I can think of and it just doesn't seem to want to work. Like I say, every time I, I start it up, I put a block over top like this. It looks like it's going to start to work really well for a second and then it stops altogether. So uh, if you've made one of these and you know how to set up the water above it, around it, through it, whatever, so that it works, by all means, leave a comment and let me know. We'll revisit it if we can get it to work. But otherwise, this thing's a write-off. Uh, but that still leaves us with the original wheel that we were showing you because this isn't the first time we've talked about resonant induction. This was just the resonant induction was the hint, the, the thing that got me inspired about doing this nothing factory um, because we can make things look cool and do things, but they aren't necessarily important or productive things. They just look cool. <laughs> That's the whole idea. But if you look at this, this is like your old school. Uh, water wheel like you might find over a creek or a small river or something like that that harnesses the power of the river uh, and and you know generates mechanical energy to run like a sawmill or a flour mill or something like that 
the whole idea is that water falls into these little troughs and then the the weight of the water is fodder for gravity to pull down on the wheel at which point it is dumped out and then the water down here continuously pushes down and is dumped out before the wheel has to lift it up this other side in which case it would just stop working that's the whole idea in this case it's rotating backwards because the water should be coming down this side and causing it to flow this way I've tried many, many different things with these wheels as well to see if I can't get them to go faster. Uh, so far, this is the best way that I've come up with in terms of how fast the wheel spins is to have water coming down one side and flowing underneath. And that gives it a reasonable rate of speed. We've got a huge gear on the back attached to the water wheel, which is turning this little gear which is turning the shaft, which is turning this gear, which is turning this electric generator. Now these are really neat. These can act as either something that produce electricity when they're turned by another source, or if you provide them with electricity, you can set them by shift right clicking with an open hand, and I'll show you that. Open hand. You can see down in the, the chat thing, generator now producing mechanical energy. If we were to provide this thing with electricity now, it would actually try and turn this gear. So you can have it either way. You can produce electricity or you can consume electricity to turn things. Now it's producing electrical energy again. So that's, I mean, the gears connecting to other gears with the shafts in between turning things, that's kind of the cool, one of the, one of the cool parts of this whole uh, mod and the whole process. So I was doing everything that I could to try and figure out a way to work it into what we were doing. I wasn't having any luck on Mars in our main world with my experiments there, so that's why we're here in creative looking at that. Now the other alternative, had the water wheel decided not to work, is this wind turbine, which is the same premise. It's similar to, you see we have water turbines, you put nine of these and then you right click them with the standard wrench and it turns into the large water wheel. It's the same thing with the wind turbine, you make these guys. You put nine together and then you should shift right click the center one with a standard wrench it makes the larger turbine and i saw an even larger one we might try and make some jumbo ones on mars and then you can see here it's attached to a small gear which is attached to these shafts turning this large gear which is turning this small gear this shaft and this small gear and then we've got these two electric generators producing electricity with that system. Now you can also see we've got this multimeter here. It's giving us some information about what's going on with the the generator. Basically for diagnostic purposes, one of the things that I've learned is when it comes to interactive uh, displays like this, the fewer we use, the better. Because I do still recall the issues we had with computer craft monitors and too many of those causing problems with game performance so I don't see myself having a lot of these incorporated in the build just for looks but I can see us using them in the build process to make sure things are working as they ought to so now with this system we've got this electricity coming from the two generators here and the one in the back from the water wheel over there coming along this wire and connected into this battery and then from this battery it's coming out to another um, electric generator. This one is set to produce mechanical energy. That's why these gears are turning. So a little bit of an example there. We can use these guys to turn gears. And also connect it to this Tesla coil, which if you remember my previous work with Tesla coils long, long ago, it was the industrial craft idea of a Tesla coil, which was a weapon. You could ch you know, have a charge in a Tesla coil and turn it on and anything within a small radius of that block would take a pretty significant amount of damage. In this case, these are used for energy transfer. You could call it wireless energy transfer. You can see it's shooting the beams up into the sky and then this is the one that's receiving. That's why they're both kind of doing the zappy thing, the laser. We're, we're not trying to duplicate the Death Star. This is actually transmitting energy between the two things. Uh, for some reason, I couldn't get it to work with this battery, probably because I had it connected wrong. Uh, I'm I'm fine with admitting that. Actually, let's see. With an open hand or with a screwdriver. Uh, none. Input. Output. 
doesn't matter. Either way, it's receiving power, this here Tesla coil, and it's coming around through wires, maybe through a battery, maybe not. This Tesla coil is idle. We can get rid of him. And then to another electric generator, which is set to produce mechanical energy, causing this guy to turn. All of this... Oh, now it's going to rain. All of this so that we can muck about and we can see how things work, if they're going to work, and whether or not we can use them. And now that I've seen firsthand that there are some very interesting and working components to resident induction, then we're free to start mucking about with them on Mars. Now, that whole waterfall that we built coming down into the Mars outdoor, you know, compound, it's the first start in this whole thing, of course with uh, providing water for the water wheels and then it's just a matter of coming up with interesting ways to make use of this without just having a bunch of spinning gears even though it could be that's all we have to start is a bunch of spinning gears and we don't actually do anything with them until later there's a lot of options there's a lot of things that we can mess around with so that's what we're going to do much messing around and if you want to be notified when I add that video of the messing around you can subscribe to my channel you can also follow me on the social media stuff. The links for that are in the information section below the video. Please do leave your comments and feedback. I always read every single comment posted to every one of my videos. Thanks for watching, guys, and take care. Hey.